Hello everyone, welcome to the video on diuretics. Diuretics is derived from words dia and uresis. Dia means passing through. So diuretics means passing through urine. That means the agents which will increase urinary output are known as diuretics. All these diuretics will be acting on nephron. The functional unit of a kidney is nephron and these agents will increase urinary output. These drugs are widely used to treat congestive heart failure and hypertension. So this is my YouTube channel. If you like my video content, do subscribe and share. Let's get into the topic. So let us understand the functional reasons in a nephron. The blood flows into the nephron through an apparatus called as glomerulus. Glomerulus is a complex network of blood vessels and it is encapsulated by Bowman capsule of nephron. Near to this, the tubule, the nephron have convolutions. This is called as proximal convoluted tubule. Understand this word proximity means it is closer to Bowman's capsule, hence it is known as proximal convoluted tubule. After that, <coughs> I'm sorry, after that there is a hairpin band like structure which is known as loop of Henle. Again, there is another convolution known as distal convoluted tubule. Distal means far away. See, there are two convolution, convoluted tubules. One is close to Bowman's capsule, hence it is not <laughs> known as proximal convoluted tubule. The other one is far away, hence it is known as distal convoluted tubule. Finally, the last zone is known as collecting duct. So, these are all the major functional areas of a <laughs> nephron. Now the basic job of nephron is the blood flows through this blood vessels glomerulus and the filtrate will get accumulated in this tubule. So body will try to secrete, secrete means send away all the molecules, uh, the uh, metabolized drugs and all of them will be secreted out of the body as well as body will also reabsorb the required nutrients or electrolytes from this nephron. So two things will take place, one secretion, sending out all the molecules like water, urea, waste material and reabsorption, taking back into the body. The reason why this is this happens is, see nine, more than 99% of the ultra filtrate is reabsorbed into the body. If this is not happens, majority of the water will be, goes out of the body and body undergoes dehydration. Not only this, important electrolytes. <laughs> <laughs> like sodium, potassium, chloride, all of them will get, will go out of the body if reabsorption will not take place. So the basic function of this kidney is to send metabolized drug molecules, urea and waste material out of the body and whatever is required it is again reabsorbed into the body. Now let us understand this process. See, these are all the four important zones, proximal tubule, ascending loop of Henle, distal convoluted tubule and collecting duct. Now, see, Organic acid base like drugs and all the diuretic drugs will get into the kidney through this proximal tubule. So this red mark indicates secretion that means it is secreted into this tubule. So diuretic drugs, organic acid base like metabolized drugs, all of them get into the nephron through this way from the proximal tubule. Now from the same zone body will reabsorb glucose, amino acid, sodium, potassium and water. All of them will get reabsorbed into the body. From ascending loop of Henle, sodium, potassium, chloride will get reabsorbed into the body. From distal tubule, sodium and chloride will get reabsorbed into the body. Now at this collecting duct, you have a hormone, two different hormones are there. Aldosterone, the basic job of aldosterone is it is a mineralocorticoid which reabsorbs sodium. The other hormone, antidiuretic hormone, its job is it reabsorbs water. Look at the word antidiuresis means which is reducing urinary output. How? By reabsorbing water. But at this reason, body secretes see a proton and a potassium. In fact, whenever a sodium is getting absorbed, it is exchanged with a proton or with potassium. So increased sodium reabsorption results in loss of proton and potassium. Remember these things. Now, now see the same thing is again explained here. See the first important reason is proximal convoluted tubule. Now what happens is in the nephron there is a special enzyme called as carbonic anhydrase. The job of carbonic anhydrase is it reabsorbs sodium and bicarbonate into the body. So whatever is getting filtrate through here, 
If the filtrate contains sodium and bicarbonate, it will be reabsorbed into the body with the help of this enzyme called carbonic anhydrase. Now, the first class of diuretics called as esterzolamide, all kind of drugs, they are known as carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. What does it mean? These drugs will inhibit this enzyme. If the enzyme is inhibited, sodium and bicarbonate will not be reabsorbed, rather they will be going out of the body through urine. Drugs like estazolamide, brinzolamide, dorzolamide, all of them, they inhibit carbonic anhydrase enzyme. And they result in, they inhibit the reabsorption of sodium and bicarbonate. But these drugs are known as weak diuretics. They are not strong diuretics, they are weak diuretics. You need to understand the reason. See, even if you block the reabsorption of sodium here, when it is going down, from all these reasons, again it will get reabsorbed into the body. Sodium will get reabsorbed into the body, so the diuretic effect is very weak. So these are not used as diuretics widely. Not used as diuretics. Right? Now, moving on to the next one. You have loop of Henle is there. In that loop of Henle, the next important reason is ascending loop of Henle. Now, at this ascending loop of Henle, there is a symport known as sodium potassium 2 chloride. Symport means the, the job of this protein is to reabsorb all these ions into the body. Sodium, potassium, two chlorides. Now, the drugs like bumetamide, furosemide, torsamide, ethacrinic acid will inhibit this symport. So, what is the job of symport? To reabsorb sodium, potassium and two chlorides. If you inhibit that pro, pro, transporter, what happens? Body will lose the sodium, potassium and two chlorides through the urine. Many ions are being lost and increases ionic gradient and it also absorbs water. So urine output will be increased. Because of this, these are known as high ceiling diuretics. High ceiling means very highly effective strong diuretics. Look at them. So they inhibit co-absorption of sodium, potassium and two chlorides. So these are the most efficacious of all the diuretics. Because they are acting at the loop, they are also known as loop diuretics. Now, the next one. The next important reason is distal convoluted tubule and here there is a symport which will reabsorb sodium and chloride from this filtrate. So from this filtrate if sodium and chloride is there it is reabsorbed into the body with the help of a symport, <coughs> a, a, a protein transporter sodium chloride. Now the drugs which act at this zone like thiazide and thiazide like drugs they inhibit sodium and chloride symporter and when the function of this proton is inhibited protein is inhibited sodium and chloride goes out of the body so see, these are most commonly used diuretics for the treatment of hypertension because they are they are causing loss of sodium and chloride they are also known as saluretics that means the salt is going out through the urine now the last zone, the last important zone is this one, collecting tubule. Now at this junction you have a hormone called aldosterone and you have also sodium channels are present, sodium channels are present. So there is a drug called a spironolactone which inhibits the function of aldosterone. What is the function of aldosterone? Aldosterone is a mineralocorticoid which increases the number of sodium channels and causes sodium reabsorption into the body. So when you block the function of aldosterone, what happens? Sodium goes out of the body, urine outflow increases. So spironolactone has got an active metabolite called as canrenone. Canrenone. But the problem with spironolactone is because it is a steroid, it will cause steroidal side effects like gynecomastia. Gynecomastia. So nowadays a, a new drug is there known as aplirenone. Aplirenone do not have this steroidal side effects. So these drugs, spironolactone, canrenone, canrenone, aplirenone will act as aldosterone antagonist. Now the next class is amyloride triamterine. They block or inhibit sodium channels present at this collecting duct. If sodium channel is inhibited, sodium will not be reabsorbed, rather it goes out of the body. So this is how these drugs act. But this class of drugs, look at this. What happens is at this tubule, when sodium is getting reabsorbed, it is exchanged either with a proton or with a potassium. So whenever a sodium is getting reabsorbed, a potassium loss will be there. If you inhibit the sodium reabsorption, what happens? Potassium remains in the body. 
Hence, these drugs are also known as potassium sparing diuretics. That means they keep the potassium inside the body. Hence, they are known as potassium sparing diuretics. See, the same thing given in an expanded way. So, look at them. At this proximal convoluted tubule, the drugs act are carbonic anhydrase inhibitors. Now, there is an another class known as osmotic diuretics like mannitol, glycerol kind of drugs. These drugs act because of their physical properties. They increase the osmosis and they take when, when they get into the tubule, they increase the osmotic gradient and water will reach us there and urine output increases. So they act at this zone. They also act at proximal convoluted tubule. Now at the loop, you have this import which is inhibited by loop diuretics. Now at distal convoluted tubule, you have sodium chloride import that is inhibited by thiazide diuretics. <clears throat> the final zone where you have aldosterone and sodium channels, the drugs which will inhibit aldosterone and sodium channel are known as potassium sparing diuretics because they keep the potassium inside the body. Hence, they are known as potassium sparing diuretics. Now, see, this one is important one. See, drugs like estazolamide, dorzolamide, brinzolamide, all of them, where do they act? They inhibit carbonic anhydrase <coughs> in proximal convoluted tubule. What is the effect? They cause loss of sodium, potassium and bicarbonate. Understand this one. Why do they cause potassium loss? <laughs> because at this junction, at collecting duct, when sodium is getting reabsorbed, see, see, whatever the sodium is coming from all through the way here, it will get reabsorbed here with a loss of potassium. So that is the reason why they also cause potassium loss. Now, they cause the loss of bicarbonate. Bicarbonate is a conjugate base. Base is going out of the body. So the blood pH becomes acidic one and hence it is causes acidosis, which is also known as metabolic acidosis. Now, ethacranic acid, furosemide, torsemide are known as loop diuretics. What is their job? They inhibit sodium, potassium and chloride at thick ascending loop of Henle. They cause loss of sodium, potassium, chloride. Along with that, positive ions like calcium and magnesium are also lost. These drugs along with the thiazides, they cause alkalosis. Now understand this one. Why do they cause alkalosis? Because, see, high amount of sodium will be going to collecting duct. At this collecting duct, sodium is reabsorbed. Along with that, what happens? It is exchanged with a proton. Proton goes into the urine. When body is <coughs> losing a proton, body is losing an acid so the acid base balances goes out of control and body becomes alkaline in nature so the blood pH become alkaline hence the condition is known as alkalosis so next one thiazide diuretics the job of thiazide diuretics is <clears throat> they inhibit sodium chloride co-transporter at distal convoluted tubule now they cause sodium potassium chloride loss but understand this one this is important one calcium will be remained inside the body this is the difference between loop and thiazides thiazides will cause calcium excretion but i'm sorry loops will cause thiazide excretion but thiazides retain calcium in fact thiazides are also used to treat calcium uh, related diseases like osteoporosis because these drugs will retain calcium again they also cause alkalosis now, the last one, potassium sparing diuretics, amyloride, triamterine, <coughs> spironolactone and epiletone. They block either sodium channel or aldosterone. They cause sodium loss, they retain potassium, that's why they are known as potassium sparing. They do cause acidosis. Why? Understand this one. See, when sodium is reabsorbed into the body, it causes loss of the proton. When sodium is not getting reabsorbed, sodium is going out, what happens? Proton leaves inside the body and hence it causes acidosis. Now, clinical coalescence. See, the important difference between loops and thi thiazide is loops <coughs> cause calcium excretion, whereas thiazides decrease calcium excretion. Now, thiazides also hyperpolarize smooth muscles, cause vasodilation and decrease insulin release. So, thiazides may, may cause a kind of diabetes mellitus. Now, epilirenone is selective aldosterone receptor blocker which do not have anti-androgenic effect. The last one, combining potassium sparing diuretics and A's inhibitors and ARBs <coughs> will cause hyperkalemia. 
Thank you for watching this video. If you like the video, do subscribe and share.